In this video, we're going to be reviewing all the different stances that we've covered so far. We'll also be going over some fundamentals that apply to all stances. Let's begin. The first and most fundamental stance in Taekwondo is a tension stance, called Charyat in Korean. When we hear the word Charyat, we bring our feet together, hands at the side, with our chest spread, back straight, and eyes forward. The next stance is ready stance, called Chumbi. When you hear the word Chumbi, we bring our tight fists up near our chest, we step out as wide as our shoulders and snap down with tight fists and a slightly rounded elbow on both arms. Now, chumbi translates to ready, and it's not just the readiness of your body, but it's the readiness of our mind and spirit as well. So anytime we do a chumbi, you are getting ready mentally, emotionally, and physically to give your best effort. From here, the next stance is horse riding stance, called chuchum sagi. In horse riding stance, we step out about twice as wide as our ready stance. We want to bend our knees and keep our hip under us and keep our whole entire upper body straight and look forward. Now, usually chuchum sagi is done to prepare for middle punch. So we would bring our arms out and step in one motion into our chuchumsagi horse riding stance. The next stance is fighting stance, otherwise known as kicking stance. In class, I like to use the phrase kicking stance kyorugi chumbi. Well, kyorugi means sparring and chumbi means ready. So fighting stance is actually getting ready to spar. In our fighting stance, if I'm facing this direction, I would take one step back and put my hands up and bend my knees and get ready for action. Now some people slightly lean forward in a more of an offensive fighting stance and some people lean back as more of a defensive fighting stance. But again, we always step away and put our hands up and we're ready to move. The next two stances are related with the practice of form or pumse. The first stance is forward stance, called apgubi. With our feet shoulder width apart, we take a step forward, we bend our knee, we keep our back leg straight, and we keep our shoulders and hips square to the target in front of us. If I were to move in this direction, this side angle view will show that my back leg is straight and that front leg is bent. And if I were to look down, I've bent it enough where I can no longer see my big toe, all while keeping my hips and shoulders square to the target. Now, a few common mistakes in this stance is that students sometimes relax their back leg and let their heel come off the ground and bend that back knee. So got to be very careful with that. And also, another common mistake is that students tend to get very thin and skinny rather than maintaining the width. So when you're practicing forward stance, keep in mind for those common mistakes. The last stance that we'll be reviewing is back stance, called the tuikubi. In tuikubi, we want our shoulders to be much more sideways than forward stance when it was square. In back stance, if I'm going towards you, you'll notice that my body's now side even though I'm slightly turned and facing my target. And that's primarily because my feet are in this position. I'm no longer starting from shoulder width apart and maintaining that width. I'm actually starting on one track that allows my body to stay sideways. Now, when our legs are apart, we, of course, we want to bend both knees. But unlike horse riding stance, where we have equal weight on both legs, we want the majority of our weight shifted to the back leg. We always want to keep in mind our front foot, that it's pointed straight towards the target, that we're maintaining tension in the legs. And last tip, I want to remind you to always keep your hips underneath you as opposed to slouched in front. 
So to make a proper back stance that is solid is to keep your hips under and behind you at all times. Now that we've reviewed all the stances, I'd like to give you some fundamental keys that can be applied to all stances, especially when you're practicing your forms. The first key is to maintain good posture at all times. It's easier said than done, but if you're trying to do your moves fluidly and try to generate power and speed and do the moves in a dynamic way, then it's not easy to maintain the same strong posture at all times. I challenge you to remember your posture in your attention stance, straight with your chest spread, not shrugging your shoulders and your head straight and looking forward. That posture should be applied to all stances at all times. No matter what it is that you do, this attention stance posture should be applied in every move. Another key ingredient in making excellent stances is maintaining tension in your stances. Not attention, but tension. It means that we're fighting very hard to stay low and to keep our lower body very, very strong. My teacher would tell me that a good stance has good tension, and when you have tension, your form becomes alive. It becomes dynamic. It has energy. But as soon as we lose it, then our form becomes dead. It's not easy to do, but you'll have to fight and work on that. When you do it correctly, your lower body will be tired, but it'll make a strong base, while your upper body can be relaxed, flexible, and free to be able to do the movements up top. So once again, strong tension in the lower body allows us to be free and flexible in the upper body. My last reminder to you in this review of stance fundamentals comes to us from our session about movement in forms. It's very much related with maintaining tension, and that is to stay low from move to move. Yes, you're maintaining tension within that move, but it's so important not to relax and then try to gain it back because we lose so much energy when we go from movement to movement if we just stand up and relax. Staying low allows us to carry our momentum, carry our concentration, carry our purpose from one technique and deliver it into the next. So keep in mind about staying low from one move, one technique to the next. Most Taekwondo students, including beginners, quickly develop an eye for what a proper stance should and shouldn't look like. They see their instructors, they watch their fellow classmates, but while it's easy for them to point out what someone did wrong or incorrectly, sometimes it's hard for them to fix it and see it in themselves. Doing forms with good stances, with solid fundamentals, requires lots of self-awareness, lots of practice, and attention to detail. I hope this video was helpful in reminding you of some of those fundamentals and that you use them to better your forms. We'll see you in the next one.